Zach, I've tried everywhere I can think of, but no one has seen your uncle today. No kidding. Probably got drunk on the way here. I'm sorry, kid. This is no way for you to celebrate Christmas Eve. Look, I tell you what. How about you hang out with me tonight and tomorrow? My shift's almost done, and now that everyone's gone, we can take off. I've already cleared it with your social workers, so looks like you're stuck ringing Christmas with me. Look, man, I have no intention of celebrating this stupid holiday with you, or anyone else for that matter. I didn't believe in Santa Claus when I was little, and uh, no one's asking for my Christmas list now. So, look, I got no family, and the one family I do have, he got drunk on the way here, so, look, you probably have a family or a Christmas party to go to, so just leave me out of it. Well, I do have a few stops I need to do make along the way, so you can come with me. Actually, you have no choice. I'm all you've got, so you might as well make the best of it. TVs. Look, I'm not into Jesus, and he clearly isn't into me. Where are we going? Well, a friend of mine is answering phones at a crisis pregnancy center tonight, and I promised her I'd drop by in case she was lonely and pray with her for a few minutes. Well, at least we'll get to see what Christmas is like for most people. Some chick gets knocked up and freaks out on Christmas. Christmas spirit for you. You know, that's pretty close to how the Christmas story starts. Remember that teenage Jewish girl named Mary? She received some pretty shocking news herself. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin, a spouse to a man, his name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. So how did Mary break this? angel news to her parents. Well, I think the hardest part was telling her fiancé. Guessing he dumped her? Uh, that was his first inclination. <coughs> Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought of these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins.
Okay, she wasn't that bad. I thought she'd be some, I don't know, preachy broad or something, but she's all right. Still, it would, it'd be awful to spend Christmas Eve in a crisis center. Doesn't she have a, you know, family or life? Well, she does have a life. You know, caring for others and reaching out to people who hurt is what tonight's all about. Now, I've got to drop some clothes and gloves off to the church. It's almost supper time, and I want to help serve the meal. Well, you have fun. I'll wait the car. <laughs> nice try. But I'm sure they've got something in there you can do. Well, at least I'll fit in with this crowd. A bunch of forgotten people taking charity from some dead guy's followers who's got houses all over the world. First of all, Zach, Jesus is very much alive. Secondly, he looked a lot more like Jesus than you might realize. He didn't have a home at first either. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. All right, we've done the whole charity thing. Can we just relax somewhere with the TV? Sure. Let's go get some coffee. Is that place open on Christmas Eve? God. All I think worse than this would be waiting tables on Christmas Eve, having to help people while everyone else drinks eggnog. Well, you'd be surprised. You know, on the night that Jesus was born, there was a bunch of guys out doing their job, and the Christmas spirit just crashed right in on them. The shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them as they were full of praise. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. People say I've always got to come back. Good night. Okay. All this aside, you've got to admit that story says that the angel said Christmas is for everyone, but Christmas ain't for everyone. Jesus ain't even for everyone. Are you talking about anyone in particular? Well, what about the Jews or, you know, Arabic people or Native Americans? What about poor people or sick people or people who have screwed up their whole life? That's it. Come on. We're going to go to my church for the midnight Christmas service.
I see you've got the International House of Jesus here. You know, Zach, Jesus really is good news for people of all nations, all colors, and all walks of life. Okay, okay. But it's still not for, you know, everyone. What about people who messed up their lives? Well, you'll have to trust me on the details here, but let me assure you that in this congregation, there are people who have messed up their lives, who have made so many wrong choices. Sure, there are some that have made good choices, but you know, even they are sinners who can't get it right without Jesus. Nobody's here because they deserve to be. Okay. Actually, that reminds me. You still haven't mentioned part of the Christmas story. What about those guys that brought him frankincense and mirrors? <laughs> I knew you remember. That's a part of the Christmas story that's still happening today. What's that? Wise men are still seeking him. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that he should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the end. <laughs>
Are we even up yet? Um, I think we're good on Jane and Casey, but I think we're 20 hours short on Brian. Oh, I know just the thing. He's been crazy about the Dallas Cowboys ever since we went to that game in Daniels in September. And I saw a Cowboys football at... I saw a Cowboys football at that toy store. I thought we'd stop it there on my home. Okay, awesome. Sounds good. You know, it never changes. Parents running around the last minute to even up their kids' wish lists. You know, I can remember when I was younger, setting up all night with my brother, just dreaming of that perfect Christmas toy. I've always looked forward to Christmas, even though I don't enjoy the cold that comes with it. But even on the coldest nights, when the only bed I have is a snowy sidewalk, I can still get lost in the lights and decorations. There's just something special about Christmas time. More people are filled with love and goodwill for their fellow man. More people volunteer to work the local soup kitchen or even just donate food or clothes to the homeless shelter. Okay, so somehow this drunken hobo ends up in the North Pole, right? And he walks up to Santa Claus somehow, he finds Santa Claus, and he goes, Hey man, I don't think you should let that reindeer drive. And Santa's like, um, why not? And he's like, because his nose is redder than mine. Um, Chris? Oh, <clears throat> Sir, Merry Christmas! I know, I'm amazing. <laughs> Everybody's full of goodwill. Everybody thinks they can solve all your problems with just a few bucks. But they're missing it. You know, maybe that's why God talked about looking at the world through the eyes of a child. You know, I've got all the answers to my problems. It's more powerful than money. It's more real than goodwill. I've got Jesus. And he's more than just a once a year thing. He's my savior the whole year round. And not just in December. When others walk by me, all they see is a dirty bum. But God sees my heart. He sees what's inside of me. And I'm so thankful that he does. Because what he sees inside of me is beautiful. I'll guarantee when you first saw me, you thought I was going to talk about how miserable I am. But that's not what I'm about. I'm just an ordinary man in an extraordinary situation. I know that no matter where I go or who I become, Jesus still loves me. And he can use me just as much as he can use you to reach out and tell someone he loves them.
I need more than money.
says, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. Yo, I can't tell you how many times through the years I have preached a message this time of the year focusing on some aspect of that. Just a couple weeks ago here I preached about the fact that unto us the child was given. I preached on the fact that he would be, his day would be called a, a wonderful counselor in the peace that comes from God. I've tried to speak to people about how that if they would just allow that baby that was born to become the mighty God in their life that he could take the chaos out just like it did in the beginning. When God began to move on the earth, things began to come together. You let God start working your life, things will start coming together. I've preached on Him caring for us as a Father, an everlasting Father, in a world of broken homes and, and mixed up relationships. We need to know that there's a Father in Heaven that cares about us and will always do things right. And that He's looking out for us. Sees the birds when they fall and knows the hairs on our head. But you know what? I cannot think. In, I, I've been pastoring since 93 in different states and places. I don't think I have ever preached a Christmas message about the government being on His shoulder. Most of us complain about the government being on our back. <laughs> and without getting into to politics, what it speaks of is a day in the future when He's actually going to be ruling and reigning and this earth will be His and things will be as they should be. You know that's in the future. Right now the government's not on His shoulders. And if there's anything that's more mixed up than us, it's our government. And I think we all understand here tonight that there's some things in this world we just can't do by ourselves. And that's why the baby was born. That's why God was in Christ. To, to reconcile the world to Himself because we couldn't get to God. So He had to become one of us to bring us to Him. To make a bridge so we could come to Him. To come and show us the way how to live for Him. To walk in His Spirit. And so the government will be on His shoulders. Well, right now, that day of His physically being here is still at some time in the future. But here tonight, December the 22nd, I think I got the date right, on a Sunday afternoon, 2013. I know I got the year right. There are so many people around us that need help. Now, I, I did not know what Brother Jim's uh, sign said. So he doesn't know I'm taking it and using it for an object lesson. But it says, help me anything will do. And you saw as they acted out, you know, sometimes it's easy to see the person with the kettle and you throw in some money or you give to your church or you give to a charity that will help and distribute to those that are in need. And it, it makes you feel good and it does a good work. And then there's other needs that really the money and the cattle and clothes at a free store or a discount store is not going to help solve anything. Because you can have all the clothes you need and all the stuff that you need and be very empty on the inside. I'd almost be willing to say that in this world today with as much stuff as we have we're in some ways not as happy as we were a hundred years ago. Maybe I think it may be true. I heard a guy on the radio the other day was going over the top requested things for Christmas in 1913. You ready for this? I came in raw 10. Didn't write them down. I was driving. So I was being a safe driver. But I was trying to remember it. Number one and number two, candy and nuts. Because it was so scarce back then. Times were hard. This is the good old USA we're talking about. So, if it was a hard candy Christmas, you got hard candy for Christmas, it was good. Nuts were hard to come by, so they candy and nuts for Christmas. Oranges were like number five. 
Now we have to bribe people. Eat your oranges now, we'll give you something else. Mittens, gloves, rocking horse, dog. I know it's not 10, I, I can't remember off 10. Do you realize how that sounds to today's Christmas list that people ask for? But still, with all the stuff that we have, we're not satisfied. And you know, when it comes to that one thing that's in the heart that is hurting, your love, your reaching out and, and, and sharing the love of God with someone, you're helping them shovel on the sidewalk or, or cleaning their house for them or, or, or you're doing something you know that they need, that's, that, that helps. It's a good thing. And I, I don't want to belittle that at all because if there's any time of the year we should show God's love by helping people, this is that time of the year. But I, boy, I see this sign, and it, it, the preacher in me just has to tell you, there's something on the inside of us that not just anything is going to do. There's something inside of us that I feel, I, I feel it all over me right now, that only the life and the death and the resurrection of that little baby. Only Jesus Christ and what He did will really make you happy and satisfied. And I can tell you, if you've got Jesus, if you've got the love of God inside your heart, it doesn't matter whether you have a car or whether you have a coat to put on your back. It doesn't matter if you have shoes on your feet. No, I'm not going to take my shoes off. I'll spare you. If you have Jesus Christ, you got it. And whether you're the one on the bench or you're helping out, you can feel so happy and so peaceful. But if you don't have Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter whether you're the one on the bench or whether you're the one that's got all the money in the world to throw away to help people out. You're still going to be miserable. Jesus Christ is the answer. He's not just the reason for the season. He is the reason for living. Amen. Stay with me tonight. Thank you for coming to Christ's life. We've got a meal prepared in the back. I hope that this has spoken to you in some way. I know I felt the presence of God during it. And before we go in the back, I think it would be appropriate. I'm not sure how they're set up back there. But if I could ask the cast and everyone to, to come forward. And I'd like to... Um, okay. I want to make sure it wasn't asking as possible. But um, I want us just to give them a round of applause. Is everybody? Everybody except for the one guy who's hiding in the back, who without whom it would not be possible. <laughs> Let's give all around the crowd. blessed to, to pass the best with the folks here in Angola. And I'm privileged to have y'all here tonight. Uh, I want us just to all to take a moment and pray. I, I don't know if y'all can hear a word I was saying. I've got to the presence of God in this place. Amen. And there's something. But Jim, do you want to use your sign for an object lesson? Your sign was good. But there's some, there's some places in us that not everything will do. It's got to be Jesus. And uh, if you need to go over, don't have let me know. <laughs> I want us to just take